Find all solutions to the equation z to the fourth minus 4z squared plus 16 equals zero over the complex numbers. Now, we have a polynomial of degree four over the complex numbers. So, factors completely in the linear factors. And that means we have four solutions, possibly with multiplicities. To solve, we note we only have even powers of z. So we can let y be equal to z squared and substitute. That gives us a new equation, y squared minus 4y plus 16 equals 0. And then we can solve for y using the quadratic equation. So we'll have that y is equal to 2 plus or minus 2 times square root of 3 times i. Of course, we check our work. So we'll take each solution, put it into our polynomial, and make sure we get 0 to come out. So I'll leave that to you. Now, we want to solve for z. We have that y is equal to z squared. So we want to take the square root of a complex number. To do that, we're going to want to convert from rectangular form to polar form. Now, to get polar form, we'll need the modulus and an angle for each solution. To find the modulus, we take okay, our complex number, the modulus squared is going to be equal to okay, our number times its conjugate, which is the same as taking the sum of the squares of the real and imaginary parts. So for both our solutions, we'll have 4 plus 12 is equal to 16, or the modulus for each solution is equal to 4. Then we'll factor 4 out of y. So I have 4 times 1 half plus or minus square root of 3 over 2i. Both of these numbers here live on the unit circle, and we'll want to put them in exponential form. So for that, we need to find the angle. Now, if we plot these in the complex plane, okay, we have our picture like this. The triangle here is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. If we check the proportions, we know that the angle that we're interested in is the large angle. So that's gonna be 60 degrees or pi thirds. So I'm looking at pi thirds here, minus pi thirds here. Using Euler's formula, we have e to the pi thirds i is equal to cosine of pi thirds plus sine of pi thirds i. And then if we just peel those numbers off the triangle, we're gonna have one half plus square root of three over two i. And that's one of our numbers here. If I put in minus pi thirds, we note we'll get our second number just by noting that the evenness and oddness of cosine and sine take care of the minus sign. If we replace y with z squared, we're now trying to solve z squared equals four times e to the plus minus pi thirds times i. The Moivre's theorem gives us the recipe for computing the square roots. So the new modulus, we're gonna take the square root of the old modulus, so that'll give us a two. For the new angles, we take our old angles we add all multiples of two pi, and then we divide by two. So that's gonna give us plus minus pi six, plus minus pi. In polar form, our solutions are gonna be two times e to the plus minus pi six times i, and two times e to the plus minus five pi six times i. If we put those in rectangular form, we'll have z equal to plus minus square root of three, plus minus i. So there we have our four solutions. Of course, we check our work. First check, let's look at the picture. So I'll plot our four points as so. Then we know two things about the solution set. Because we have a polynomial with all real coefficients, if we have a complex solution, we also have its complex conjugate as a solution. So that means the solution space is closed under complex conjugation or reflection through the real axis. So we note that holds up. We also have, since we have only even powers of z, if I have a solution, minus that solution gives me another solution. So that means our solution space is gonna be closed under multiplication by minus one or rotation by 180 degrees. So this solution goes to here, this solution goes to here, and that also pans out.
Second check, well, we just want to check our solutions in the original polynomial. So we better get zero to come out. So we can work out, for instance, for z equal to square root of three plus i, we can square it, and we can take the fourth power. Now, once I do that, I want to go back to z of the fourth power minus four z squared plus 16. When we compute this, we know we get a zero. So for that solution, it checks out. I'll leave it to you to check the other three.